Hey everybody, this is a tutorial about PyCharm, one of the most popular Python IDEs. So in this screencast I would like to cover where you can get the IDE. Uh, we won't cover the install process, but the important part is uh, how do we configure it and how do we use Python virtual environments with PyCharm. So let's get started. First, if you want to download PyCharm, you go to JetBrains website. And as you can see, there are two versions of PyCharm. There's the Professional Edition and the Community Edition. Community Edition is free and uh, it has all the cool features like uh, IntelliSense, so it has auto-complete uh, refactoring and uh, built-in debugger. Though the professional edition is really cool because it supports the major Python web frameworks and uh, all the nice little stuff like JavaScript, Coffee Script, template languages. <clears throat> so professional edition normally costs, but you can get a 30-day trial or you can get an open source license if you are an open source organization or you can ask for a key from your open source organization. Or if you are a student, you can get uh, all those products, a bundle of those. Um, if you have an edu email or a valid eSeq card. So um, let's get started. Ah, whatever. In case you are wondering, this is not my workspace environment. Right now, I am in a guest account. So, the reason why I chose uh, a guest account so that I will have an absolutely new no settings, no user settings for the PyCharm being set up ever. So it's like a blank page. I'm I'm starting just like just like you. So first, let's check uh, for several prerequisites. So first you need to see if you have Python interpreter installed. So I have 2.7.9. Then see if you have pip. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's good. And virtual environment as well. Perfect. Uh, bonus point, see if you have git that will help me show you how PyCharm works really nicely with uh, version control systems like Git and maybe if you have Mercurial it will work as well. So let's start and create um, a new folder in which we will create our project. So let's do awesome project. Pay attention to the fact that I don't have nothing else but letters. PyCharm projects, when created, they accept only letters, numbers, and underscores, so you can have it like that or like that. <clears throat> okay, let's see the into awesome project, and let's create a virtual environment right here. Um, this is the name of the virtual environment, normally you call it like vanv or env, it depends. Um, this is not the most awesome way to do it. There is virtual environment wrapper, which is so much cooler, but we'll try to keep the things simple. So here we go. Good. Let's activate it. Mm -hmm. Activate. Perfect. Let's pip install Django. I will show you how to uh, start a Django project and set it up in PyCharm. Um, I assume that every other one like Flask or a Pyramid uh, or just a simple one, though you have like really really simple scripts, just use Sublime or Vim. It's no need to have a full ID running for that. So hooray we have Django. If you want to check that well, we can see that it's successfully installed, but, you know, yeah. 
no import error. Perfect. So what we do now, let's create start project. Awesome. Okay. Yay. And let's see what do we have. Yeah, it's good. We have the manage.py, that's the most important. And um, don't forget like, if you want to do git init. And we have uh, a dot git directory. So let's get started with the PyCharm. So let's see. Okay, this is going to be the first launch. Let's see. So first you can import your settings from p previous versions. Uh, normally, if you have your own setup, it's a good idea to export your settings so that you don't have to do that all the time. I think it's going to be like a jar, um, but let's assume this is our first time and we don't have any settings for PyCharm. So right now, yeah, license, no license. I won't enter my JetBrains account right now. I'll just like say I want a free version for 30 days. And... Ray. So you can see this is version 3.4. Okay, so for the initial configuration, you can choose the key map scheme. Well, this is like the shortcuts that you type. For instance, if you have used Emacs for a long time, you can use the same shortcuts or Visual Studio or Eclipse. I usually stick with the default. IDE theme, my favorite one is Darkala. I think that's really, really cool one. And let's click to preview so you can choose different color schemes and see how they're different. So right now it says since we have applied this kind of global uh, changes to our ID, it wants to restart. So let's do it right now. And here you can see that actually the theme has already changed. It's black. Well, grayish. Okay, so you can go to configure if you want to. Again, import settings, export settings, plugins, preferences, but we'll go to preferences later. Let's right now create a new project. And the creation of the new project is actually, yeah, we can go and do it like that. Uh, so clumsy. Okay, this is more complicated for me. Let's, I know that it must be here, awesome project, and let's say this is a Django project. So it, it finds out that there is no Django support installed in our interpreter. Why? Because the interpreter it uses by default is like the, the system-wide, your global one. But we actually have a virtual environment. So what we'll do right now is we will add it. There are three options. You can add a local one, which is on your file system. This is what we have. You can add a remote one, for example, via SSH, uh, somewhere on some remote server you have a virtual environment. Or you can create it. Well, we have already created it. So let's do this. Uh, okay, the finder is so clumsy, so I don't like it. Let's do it just this way. Can I edit it like that? No, I can't. So, okay, one way to do it, let's say that we want an empty project. Let's say OK. So it definitely sees that it's not empty, so we want to create it from the source. It's right there. And here we go. We've got some tips which you can read, but we'll close it right now. Let's see what do we have in our project. So we have manage.py and um, OK, it's pretty good. Let's go to whiskey URLs. Okay, so this is the structure of our very simple Django project. But right now, what we'll do, we'll go to preferences. It's a bit slow. So let's go to the interpreter and configure right now what interpreter. 
inspections. No, I don't need the project window. Okay. Okay, so yeah, edit. Okay, so in fact, PyCharm apparently is so smart that it figured out that we have a virtual environment inside our folder, so it just like set it up by himself. That's just absolutely amazing. So let's see. What does it look like? What's the path? So it just... Okay, so the name that it gave it automatically is this, like Python 2.7, blah, 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 interpreter virtual environment at this point, and the interpreter path. We can adjust it, but if you ever need to set it up by yourself, you could find your interpreter inside a virtual environment, just like in bin Python. So you okay, it's already associated with the current project. So it's like you just click OK and you say, hooray, it just works. Let's imagine that we have maybe a virtual environment somewhere else that we want to use. So let's go to the home directory and let's create here a new one. Let's enable this one. Okay, so if we'd like to see there is no going to be no Django here, we get an import, but we can install it. Django. Okay, let's do some let's let's install another package like Django braces, for example. That's really cool. So we can do pip freeze and we'll see that we have all those packages. So suppose that you want to add another virtual environment, the one that we have just created. So how do we do that? Let's go to show all tab and here we can click the plus button and add local. Okay, let's go to users. Cast um, virtual environment bin and Python 2, I think. Let's see. Let's click OK. Um, okay, and here we go. So the difference is that, for example, here we have besides Django, we have also Django braces. And let's see if it really works. Um, so let's try import braces. And it works. Well, the whole idea is that inside our new virtual environment, we already have Django braces. So that's pretty cool. Along that, uh, the most of the setup uh, looks pretty good for PyCharm. The only thing that you want to check is that you should go to the mm, Python coding style and check that you don't use the tab character but you use the spaces. Tab is usually 4 and then 4 continuation 8. So yeah, pretty much all the defaults look good. So this is it. Thanks for listening. This was a PyCharm setup. See you.